Anyways, I got a story for you. I've experienced quite a few terrifying occurrences in my lifetime. Quite a few. Nothing takes the birthday cake quite like this. I mean, well, maybe the birthday kid. Other than that, nothing freaking else. I know that's a bold statement. Perhaps even italic, with a font size upwards to the 30 point. I mean, maybe even 42 point. Crap, that's headliner size. And it's in Times New Roman, so you know I'm serious. If it was in Comic Sans, we'd all have, be having a good laugh right now. It's about time you guys know something about me. I'm a wild sleeper. Guilty as charged. There is a fine array of different sleepers out there. I mean, you got the freaking, you got the, you got the sleepers that sleep on their back. You know, I can't freaking sleep like that. Cause I just keep imagining somebody crashing through my window and slamming a chest stake into my heart. Like Van Helsing. Freaking Van Helsing would do something like that. Plus it also produces a sound like a bear choking on a hall's cough drop. Snoring. You know you can actually make that sound delicious if you call it s'moring? That's something I want to be a part of. Then you got belly sleepers. The curled ball or nocturnal milk dud. And then you got friggin' the heat leechers. You got the one foot out, one foot in. You got the soul slipper. You also got the blood raisin, but that involves an ice skate and a ping pong ball. Then you got the side sleepers. And they're all dreaming about a friggin' young strapping Leo drawing them like his French girls. I'm sorry to say, side sleepers, but that ship sunk long ago. I personally sleep like I'm getting attacked by a night-long, unrelentless swarm of caterpillars. Or, like a fish on his first date with dry land. But things didn't go too well, no. What I'm trying to say is that I'm a nocturnal sleep stallion and I can't be tamed. And there are disadvantages to sleeping in such precarious ways. And I've woken up to these disadvantages many times. Kinks in the neck? Mm. We all know that's caused by a freaking small, gentle night imp slamming a metal fence post into your neck. Leg cramps. Whew. That's the worst way to wake up, period. Although Van Helsing come crashing through the window and slamming a chest stick into your heart. Close second. And then there's why I'm telling you this story. So this one spring Saturday morning, a middle school me awakes. I remember immediately feeling this reminder that I was housing a sack full of the morning brew. Pee. Lots of pee. Ready to vacation into the nearest above ground porcelain wormhole. I start making my way to the door to expel the toxins. And as I reach for the door, my freaking right arm slams against it like a friggin' wet spaghetti noodle. My arm was straight up asleep. No big, I have another. So I go and I grab the doorknob with my left arm and that slams against the door like some sort of freaking inebriated glowworm on a moon bounce. Freaking both my arms were dead asleep. I don't even freaking know how that even happens. I freaking had a urine supply that was sloshing at the brim and two dead arms. I didn't know what to do. I knew I would be okay if I could just get the door open. So I start swinging these two thrift store tentacles at the door trying to grab the dang doorknob. I was like freaking Donkey Kong at a rave. And I... <laughs> so I walk into the middle of the room and for some odd reason I start swinging my arms like a helicopter and it was the creepiest feeling. It felt like I didn't have bones in my arms. And this is when I flat out start weeping. I'm talking, it wasn't a cry. It was a full expulsion of liquids just draining out of my freaking face. So I'm swinging my arms, weeping. And this is when I freaking, my life flashes forward to a, a future where I only had hot dog links for arms. It was the most horrifying flash forward ever. I see this image in my mind as clear as day. What I see is a single bowl of cereal. <laughs> I was crushed at the idea that I would never be able to crunch into a spoonful of cereal with both of these hands. I, 
I couldn't handle a life without cereal. Cereal is life. And that's, you know what that is? That's gravestone material. Here lies our beloved. Cereal is life. <laughs> I fall to my knees, bawling over a freaking breakfast food. I made a promise to myself that if I ever regained both, that I would freaking eat all of the cereal. <laughs> I would eat it all. My bladder at this point <laughs> was dangerously close to rupturing. I could feel the bladder bulkhead snapping. Okay, it was that close. And as quickly as it happened, my arms begin to ignite into tingles. I feel the blood rushing back into them. The feeling was coming back. And then I hear the most beautiful sound, my door opening, and it's the life giver. My papa! He's actually there to tell me that it, it was time to commence in the weekly yard work. So I turn with my face stained with post-cry evidence. And I even had, I had snot droplets dangling like some sort of 99 cent store sticky hand. I stand up looking at my hands in just splendor. And I say the most thought provoking, inspiring words, almost as if an angel had descended upon a unicorn and whispered in my ears these words. I look at my papa. And I say, I'm going to be using both. Both. My dad couldn't even speak a response. He was so spellbound by these words that all he could do was give me a strong, but sincere and slightly confused stare. It's a stare that I've gotten quite a bit in my life. <laughs> I've gotten that quite a bit. And in the heat of the moment, I, I say something that I did not think all the way through. And, uh, and I, I, and I say, I'm going to use both of these in a spoon to become a serial killer. I knew what I was trying to say, you know, which was, I was just gonna eat a lot of cereal, you know, because I made that promise to myself and, you know, but you know, it, it probably wasn't the best way to word things. And my dad didn't go on the personal vision quest that I had with a cereal bowl, so to him it just came off like I was just going to go on a, a murdering spree with a spoon. Nevertheless, I sprint past my dad into the bathroom and I freaking open up a valve. A full-on explosion of pee. And it just rips waves into a cereal bowl of a different kind. That was actually the third greatest moment of my life. Until I got grounded. Half because I think of the serial killer thing and the other half was I actually ended up eating all of the cereal. And I, and I threw up half a box of tricks all over the kitchen. I actually didn't know that throw up could go that far and that high. I mean, it was like the exorcist. I actually got the cat as well. It was eating and I, so moral of the story is, you know, one bowl a day because that keeps the projectile vomit away. <laughs> whoa, whoa! Draw me like your French girls, Leo.